What is going on everyone? Leon checking in and today we're at it again with another video. So today we're here to do an update on the Pixelbook Go. So the Pixelbook Go is the newest Chromebook made by Google which features a minimalist clamshell design and it gives it a laptop form factor. Now this device is going to be very thin and very light. Now if we take a look at the underside, you're going to see that we have this rib texture and we have a rubber bumper on the back and on the front to protect that underside. This rib texture is nice because it's going to help with transport and it's gonna give you a good grip. Now, if we take a look at the lid here, we're gonna have the G logo there and it's just a nice little accent to have. Let's everyone know that this is a Google device. Now, when it comes to actually opening up the device, you can do this with one hand and it's very nice because it barely lifts up. It's actually even nicer on this device because it's so light, you would think that the whole device would kind of lift up when you go to open that lid. And just like opening, the lid closes smoothly as well. Now the Pixelbook Go has a widescreen display and it's very nice, but compared to other Chromebooks like my Pixelbook, it does have a yellow tint to it. Now this actually isn't easy to notice. You'd have to have a Chromebook next to this with both of the screens turned on same settings. The Pixelbook Go also has a touchscreen display and while it's nice to have, I haven't really used it that much only because of the clamshell factor. It kind of limits your use for using the touchscreen. It feels a little bit awkward to actually use a touchscreen on a clamshell design. It seems that a touchscreen is best for a two-in-one like the Pixelbook. So this portion of the video is actually interesting because we're recording it on the Pixelbook Go. Now the Pixelbook Go has what Google calls the duo camera. Now I wanted to include this in the video so you can get an understanding of what kind of video quality the Pixelbook Go produces. Now, along with this, you also get to hear what the mic from the Pixelbook Go sounds like as well. Now, this camera is actually pretty interesting because it records in 1080p, but you can also see from this video that it also records wide, and I really like that about this camera. Now, as you can see, the video quality is not completely clear, but it's actually a lot better than a lot of other laptop cameras. So what this means is this is going to be great for not only video calls, but it's going to be great for anyone who's looking to create content and this is all they have. Now, along with the camera being able to record video, it also has three photo formats. These are photo, square, and portrait. Then there are the speakers for the Pixelbook and they sound excellent. The speakers are located on both the left and right side of the keyboard. Now this is a nice setup because it actually creates a surround sound experience. The speakers actually get pretty loud and they have a good amount of bass to them. The audio experience on this device makes it great for consuming content such as watching videos or listening to music. Then there is the keyboard. The keyboard has good travel and good click feedback. Now when I used to listen to other reviewers, I always wondered what good travel and click feedback meant. And to me, it really means that you can press a key without having to wonder if you actually hit it. Now the keyboard layout on the Pixelbook Go is really nice too. You have all your helpful keys in the top row. Also on this keyboard, we have a dedicated Google Assistant button, and that's very nice for when you're in an area where you don't want to communicate with the Google Assistant by voice. As for the touchpad, it has good tap and click feedback, just like the keyboard. Now, one of the things I like about the Pixelbook Go is if you have to use it at nighttime, you do have a backlit keyboard here but it also has a timeout feature. So if you don't press on it for a certain amount of time, the lights on the keyboard, they'll actually go out. And I'm not really sure if there is a power saving reason behind it or if it's just for effect, but if you wait a moment here, you'll actually see it go off. Moving on to the base of the device, we do have a USB-C charge port on both the left and the right side, along with an LED charge indicator. On the left side, you're gonna find an aux jack and that'll be to plug in your headphones if you're still using headphones. Moving on to the battery for this device, it actually works really good whether you're streaming music, Netflix, or Google's game streaming service, Stadia. I did wanna try the quick charge feature on this device too and in about 20 minutes, it gains a 20% charge. Next is the Pixelbook Pen and the Pixelbook Pen is a device that's available on the Google Store. However, the Pixelbook Pen does not work with the Pixelbook Go because it was designed for the Pixelbook. So although you can buy it on the Google Store, if you have the Pixelbook Go, do not buy the Pixelbook Pen 
they're not gonna work together. And lastly, I just wanted to share some randomness and that is the Pixelbook Go and the Pixel 4 XL go great together. Now I got the Pixelbook Go in just black and as you can guess, I got the Pixel 4 XL in just black as well. Now you can do some really nice things when you have a Chromebook and an Android device and I use my Pixel 4 XL to actually unlock my Pixelbook Go. So I think the Pixelbook Go is another great addition to the Chromebook lineup. Chromebooks always start up fast and they stay fast. I really like Chromebooks too because they're very low maintenance. A Chromebook like the Pixelbook Go is a great device for anybody who just wants something that works. I'm a big fan of Chromebooks and if you've been following the channel for a while here, you'll know that I edit all my videos on a Chromebook. So as for the Pixelbook Go, it is my main Chromebook right now and I look forward to using it more and sharing more of my experiences with all of you. So that is pretty much it for today's video. If you enjoyed it and found it useful, make sure you leave a like. If you have any questions or comments, as always drop those down below and I'll do my best to answer them. Now there are three different ways you can support the channel. The first way is to head on over to my Amazon storefront and anything that you purchase off my list will support the channel. The next way to support the channel is just by sharing this video with someone who might enjoy it or find it useful. And the last way to support the channel is just by hitting that subscribe button. Now liking and subscribing are important as well because it lets people know who are new to the channel that there are a lot of likes and subscribers and that must mean that the channel has some good information people like it people are subscribing so that is pretty much it and until next time leon check in out